morning. Welcome back to my channel. We are going to be doing a little vlogging today. I just got done training my clients. I am now about to train me. And then I have a lot of writing to do today. So that is what is on tap. I'm looking, I'm in a parking lot right now and I'm looking, I'm kind of wishing that I had brought a hat because I'm gonna do my warm up outside and the cicadas are everywhere. And when they get in your hair, oh, what a disaster. So I'm at my desk and I'm about to get ready to start doing some writing. One of the challenges that I'm coming up against right now is the pacing of the book that I'm writing. I've never written a novel before and trying to figure out how to space events and how to track time in the storyline is turning out to be a bigger challenge than I would have thought. So over the weekend, I spent some time reworking my timeline a little bit um, based on some research that I had done, based on some reading that I had done of other, other novelists who have really good steady pacing and their books flow very nicely. So did some reworking of the outline of my novel and now I'm going back in and having to rework some scenes and some some of the story architecture to better fit with the new timeline that I have. And uh, it's not easy. So today I'm doing some transcribing work for a local house museum in Prince George's County, Riversdale. And it's really fascinating work to do. It gives you such a cool glimpse of life in the early American Republic. That's sort of the time frame that I'm mostly looking at when I'm doing this transcribing. And there's often a lot of drama. Uh, I've transcribed letters where uh, someone has apologized because a worker that he sent to fix a mill chopped off his arm while working on the mill and wouldn't be able to return to work. So he wanted to send somebody else back in his place. Um, he did note that the person who lost his arm was healing, as one would expect. Um, I've also transcribed some pretty heartbreaking letters, um, one where a woman was very upset and worried about whether or not she would have a place to stay because her landlord wasn't renewing her contract for where she had been living. And then sometimes it's just really hard stuff to read as well. I've transcribed contract negotiations for 
the labor of enslaved boys and kind of seeing that in print can be kind of tough. Um, so today I'm working on a letter and I thought I would show you kind of how I set it up and how I go about doing the transcribing. So, hold on. Okay, so this is my general setup for when I do transcription work. And over here on my iPad is the actual digitized document that I'm working on. In this case, it's a letter from Thomas Hart Clay to Charles Calvert. Um, Thomas Hart Clay, well, you know what? I'll come back and tell you a little bit more about him in a sec. So this is the transcription. This is where I'm typing out exactly what this letter says. And that includes any typos, um, any kind of sentence structure that isn't what we typically use today. It needs to be translated right here exactly how it is, um, which can be kind of tough because things like spell check and you know, grammarly, they want to pick up and, and fix what is broken in this document. And that's not what transcription is about. And then I always just have um, a piece of paper and a pen ready to go because sometimes there is something that I want to look up or research to help me make sure that I'm using the correct names or the correct words. In this case, um, this letter starts with a pretty heartbreaking paragraph where the person writing the letter, Thomas Hart Clay, is talking about what appears to be a funeral procession or um, kind of travels through Kentucky where he's going to events where people are mourning someone and he found it to be really hard, just very heartbreaking. And it wasn't until I got to the end of the letter and realized who was writing the letter that I realized that Thomas Hart Clay is Henry Clay's son. And what he was describing in this letter over here is the reception that he received when he went back to Kentucky after the death of his father. So it was just incredible to be that close to the people that we read about in history books. So this is my setup for when I'm transcribing documents. Um, of note, when I'm transcribing glasses, absolute must. It is the only way sometimes that I can make any sense out of the writing that I'm seeing both in the digitized document and then also what I'm putting on my computer screen. Old lady eyes, they're getting tired. <laughs> Okay, so it is Friday, wrapping up my first week of vlogging. This was harder than I expected it to be, I have to say. I kept forgot forgetting, forgetting. I kept forgetting to record things that I was doing and the whole point of vlogging is sort of that behind the scenes look and I kept forgetting to do that. So, lesson learned. Um, also learned a little bit about camera angles and lighting, and hopefully there'll be a lot of improvements on that front as well. But for now, I trained my clients this morning, just finished training myself, and I'm going to head home, get something to eat, and take care of some writing that I need to get done. So happy Friday, and I'll see you in the next vlog. Thanks for watching.